Hello, this is John Roberts from the Pivotal Data Innovation Lab. This presentation will be covering the installation and usage of Pivotal Greenplum on AWS, GCP, and Azure Cloud Marketplaces. So this presentation will have some forward-looking statements. Um, it may change going forward, so just be aware of that. So Guitar Hero is now available on Linux, and uh, it's obviously a joke, and, um, but you can get the idea that, that many times when trying to deploy something on Linux or a new environment, there are many, many components necessary, and a lot of those components are dependent upon one another. So you may have wanted that guitar, but to get a guitar, you have to get the wood, get the wood, you have to you know, go through these different components, and it's very time-consuming, and at the end of the day, all you wanted was to play Guitar Hero on Linux. If Pivotal decided to run Greenplum, let's say, now available on AWS, unfortunately, customers may have the same uh, type of experience with all the different components and resources necessary to deploy Greenplum in a cloud environment such as Amazon, um, they'd be very frustrated. There are many, many resources necessary. Linux AMI, Security Group, VPC, all these different terms and um, interdependencies are all necessary to deploy Greenplum in, uh, in Amazon. So Pivotal has gone through this trouble and done all this work, done all the research, figure out the best way to do this and provide this in the cloud marketplace. And so instead of having this experience where it's like running Guitar Hero on Linux. It's much easier, and it's like an easy button for running Greenplum in the cloud. Um, it's the same software that you'd run in the cloud as you do on-premise. So you can have 90 minutes or less to deploy a production-scale cluster. And that's really a truly 90 minutes or less, and it's really a production-scale cluster. So it's great for proof of concepts, development environments, spend some minutes for a developer, let them use it, and then destroy it when done. It's great for quick evaluations. And it's also, it makes migrations to the cloud easier. Create that new deployment in the cloud marketplace and move, and move your data from on-premise to the cloud. Installation is pretty straightforward and pretty simple. Um, and this is a, a, a video demonstrating how easy it is installed. It's been sped up some for ease of um, demonstration purposes. So you go to the Cloud Marketplace in like Amazon and type in Greenplum, and you'll see uh, two different listings. This is the BYOL listing, which I'll talk about later, uh, the differences in licensing. You provide some information like the stack name, where you want to deploy, the number of nodes, the instance type, um, and then the optional installs, and also the key name, like how to access it through SSH. From there, you deploy the cluster and say create the stack. Um, and it's all using the cloud formation scripts or templates and it's all built into Amazon. You can see that it's already deployed the six nodes that we requested. It's initializing these nodes and then does some checks within Amazon. After the checks are complete, it assigns the, the nodes to the different roles. So master, standby, and then segments um, one through four. Again, this has been sped up um, for demonstration purposes, but the output of the stack, once complete, will include um, a URL to the command center so you, and a randomly generated password. This is an, a DBA tool to manage and monitor the, the database after installation. And you can also SSH the box. So I'll do that here, and I'll be using the SSH key that I provided during the deployment. And you can see the message of the day and all this information, and one of them is optional installs. So I'll go to the optional install directory, run the installer, and you can see our, I've already installed command center, which was done from the GUI in, in Amazon. But now I'll install some more optional installs. So this case is PLR. It does it all for me, and just by hitting number one, number two, so forth. Now I'm installing Madlib. So this is the same installer that runs from the GUI, um, and you can go after the fact and install some things. Um, and to make it easier for you to use and evaluate the product. Now this is the same software that you get from the Pivotal Network and you can install other um, optional installs. We just added some to make it easy for you. The best practices have been used to design the topology for the deployment of Greenplum running in the various clouds. They've been reviewed and approved by the cloud vendors. 
so you know they're going to be stable, secure, fast, and reusable. We've also implemented Greenplum best practices, such as using a load balancer, like PG balancer, a number of segments per host, and memory configurations. The deployment on the different cloud marketplaces are completely automated using the native tools within the cloud uh, marketplaces. So AWS uses CloudFormation, Google uses Cloud Launcher, and Azure has automation. The scripts that are actually executed as a part of the templates from the cloud marketplaces are all the same across the di different vendors. So the best practices are again used for the deployments. So we've been, and also performance optimized. So we've figured out the best con uh, configuration of memory disk and network uh, and CPU based on the instance type that you're choosing and making sure it's run as optimal as possible. It's going to be secure. So not only are we looking at it um, in, in, in fine detail, but the cloud vendors also have a review process where they make sure that the uh, images and the operating system is up to date as much as possible on the latest um, security patches so we're not going to be vulnerable uh, to some um, recent uh, uh, security vulnerabilities such as like uh, Spectra or Meltdown um, that's been recent. <laughs> um, best practices have also, also been implemented, so things like password authentication is disabled, uh, MD5 encrypted passwords authentications required for Greenplum database, and root logins been disabled. There's also data at rest encryption available, and, and, as, and across every marketplace we always deploy Greenplum in a separate network, so that we have uh, not only better performance but also better security. So you may be wondering, is it fast? So most definitely. So one of the things we use at Pivotal is TPCDS um, to benchmark and come up with a score for the different deployments. Now TPCDS is an industry standard. Many vendors will use this TPCDS benchmark. Um, and if you're not familiar with it, it, it contains a star schema with 24 tables, 99 queries. We test with three terabytes of data and one in five concurrent users. And we typically like to test with 16 segment hosts or 16 nodes for data, and then two masters, uh, master and a standby. You can see this script, uh, this, all the scripts uh, in part of the TPCDS on this GitHub repo, GitHub Pivotal Guru TPCDS, and that's actually, actually my repo. Um, and then Azure test will be coming soon. We're waiting on some um, accelerated networking testing to complete to be before we publish those no numbers. So this score is an aggregate of all of the timings uh, from the one five user queries plus the time it takes to load the data. And as you can see, the reading from top down that appliance one to appliance two, double performance, but then AWS um, R4 8X large is about the same performance, which is amazing. And GCP, which is going to be released very soon in the marketplace, is even better performance than that. We tested some third-party hardware, so we, again, it's the same software on-premise versus cloud, and ran a little bit faster. And then the, the fastest Pivotal's ever tested is the R4 16X Large. It's um, remarkably fast, it's great for concurrency, um, and it scored the highest score um, that Pivotal's ever seen. And so, yes, the cloud is fast. You deploy Greenplum there knowing that it is going to be fast. So, in the cloud, uh, for Amazon, they have an, a feature called Auto Scaling Group, which is a way to provision a bunch of nodes, and then if a node were to fail, it'll automatically get restored. So we've leveraged the Auto Scaling Group with an Amazon for Greenplum to provision all the nodes, and so if a node were to fail, Amazon automatically recovers that node for you. We've enhanced our scripts to automatically handle the the uh, automatic um, instantiation of that the fail or the, of the new node, and it will automatically recover itself. It will figure out what role it should have, whether it be a master, standby, or segment host, and then execute the steps necessary to restore services fully. So that means if you have a failure of a hardware level, instead of having a day or or even weeks of, of waiting for a um, new hardware into your data center, Amazon will replace it automatically within minutes and then our scripts will kick off automatically and restore services 100% um, automatically for you. So 
full recovery is going to be in, in ter terms of minutes, if not maybe an hour or two. And then um, where as comparison to on-premise, you're talking about days usually. Another feature we have leveraged in Amazon is uh, the snapshot feature of EBS storage. So EBS is elastic block, block storage, which is our recommended uh, method for storage in Amazon. And so snapshots lets you take a little picture of the data volume. Uh, and we've also created a tool to manage uh, the creation, the scheduling, listing, deleting, and restoring of snapshots. So you don't have to worry about a 60 plus volume snapshots. You can just run one command get a snapshot ID and then be able to restore to that snapshot. We've also automatically configured it to take weekly snapshots and keep a rolling copy of four um, snapshots for you automatically. And it's all configurable. You can change it after the fact. After you install um, your cluster, you can go in and change the, the backup schedule however you want to make it run. So this is a uh, backup process within Amazon, and this is the big instance type, that R4 16x large, which is the largest in Amazon, has two masters, 16 segment hosts. That means you have 768 terabytes of data and 66 EBS volumes. Play the video here. And you can see this is the output of the stack. It has all the information regarding the cluster. It has um, 18 total nodes and 16 segment hosts, two masters, and you see the volumes are 66 volumes. Running a backup is pretty simple. Run GP snap, create. And from there, it takes over, does everything necessary for you. Uh, you don't have to know all the Amazon commands. You don't have to label all the snapshots to make sure that you have the snapshot assigned to the right uh, node and right volume. It does this automatically for you. You don't have to keep a track of all the different snapshots um, that are assigned to this particular backup set. So it does it all automatically for you. And this has been sped up to for demonstration purposes, but it's very, very fast. After the snapshots have been initiated, the database can start again. And while the, the snapshots are being checked to make sure they're complete, you can still you can now log into the database and use the database again. That means this database was only down for three minutes while I did a snapshot of 792 terabytes uh, and across 66 EBS volumes. It makes backups uh, a much easier process, a much quicker process when running Greenplum in AWS. Upgrades. So to take advantage of the, the very fast software release velocity that Pivotal has with new versions coming out very, very quickly, uh, there's now a new upgrade utility built into the cloud marketplaces for Greenplum. You get notified when a new version is available, and then you can run a command to upgrade the database automatically with one command. You don't have to download the software. It does it for you. You don't have to copy it out to all the nodes. It does everything for you. And this is a quick demo of that process of doing upgrade. So I'll first I'll SSH into the, the master node, which is a small uh, single node cluster. And you can see the, that it's running version 5.0. I run uh, crontab-e to look at the, the current GP upgrade, GP cron upgrade, sorry. And it runs every uh, Sunday at midnight to check for a new version. Now I'll force it to run right here and GP cron upgrade. It lets you know, hey, there's a new version available. I'm running 5, 5.2 is available. Let's update the message of the day. So to let node, just let, um, Users know when they SSH to the master that there's a new version available. So you just run GP upgrade to upgrade the database. So I'll run that now as a DBA, so you know, GP admin here. It shuts down the database, downloads the binaries, copies it out to all the segments, and then masters the standbys, and then it upgrades the database. And you can see this, it was sped up a little bit, but still it's very, very fast. The version now is 5.2, where I was on 5.0. So it makes upgrades very easy, very simple process for you. Last but not least, we have Pivotal Web Services. We have a tile now in the Pivotal Web Services offering for Greenplum. And so that means you developers who are developing software in Pivotal Web Services and can now pick Greenplum uh, very easily and all integrated in Pivotal Web Services. This is a fully managed environment, 
has automated maintenance, multi-tenancy, and it's actually deployed using the Green Plum on AWS Marketplace offering. The pricing is free, um, and then availability is 24-hour SLA. So it's just another way to start using and evaluating Green Plum in the cloud. You can attach it very easily in Pivotal Web Services using the green, new Green Plum tile. Licensing. So uh, in the marketplace, you'll see BYOL and metered or hourly. Um, so BYOL is bring your own license, and it's the same software subscription license you'd have for on-premise. So one thing worth noting is the, that um, your subscription license is based on cores, not vCPUs. A vCPU is a virtual CPU, which is a hyperthread. So when you look at how many vCPUs you have, and um, a cloud offering, cut that number in half to get the number of cores, and that's what you get. That's what you um, would pay for for licensing. So if you had 100 vCPUs, that'd really only be 50 cores, and you'd pay for a 50 core license. It's the same support for as on premise as in the cloud, so nothing changes there. And another feature we have is a, a 90 day evaluation in the end user license agreement, the HULA. Uh, so that means you can spin up a BYOL uh, cluster, use it for up to 90 days with, without support, um, and not have to pay for a license for, of that. So it's another way to, to evaluate GreenFlow. Again, that's great for proof of concepts. Metered, so metered is a, a hourly based billing. So you don't have a subscription license, you just pay 50 cents per core per hour for all the cores that you've deployed. Um, and again, that's per core, not per vCPU. So it's like 25 cents per vCPU or 50 cents per core. And the support there is through email. And then last but not least, you can always, always run the open source version. And that's just paying for the cloud cost, you know, for the infrastructure that you're deploying. Some pricing examples. On the left is GCP single node, and on the right is AWS single node. They're basically the same. As, you know, it's um, high memory, four v cores, four terabytes uncompressed storage across both. The pricing's at a monthly, it's priced monthly, but with a three-year commitment uh, from the different cloud vendors. And you can see 318 for GCP, 344 for Amazon. And then the P PDS is the Pivotal Data Suite, which is Greenflow. And it's the same because it's the same number of virtual cores. So it's very inexpensive, as you can see, to have a fully um, cloud development environment that's completely supported, just like you'd have on-prem. So to review, so Green Plum on the Cloud is great for proof of concepts, even production. You know that it has a validated topology. It's, you know it's automated using the automation tools. It's secure, and you know it's going to be very, very fast. And you know it has cool features like self-healing, has backup automation through GP Snap, and upgrades are now much easier than using the GP upgrade. Last but not least, we have Pivotal Web Services, which is, makes it another way for developers to start using Green Plum from the Pivotal Web Services um, environment. So what's coming to uh, Pivotal Green Plum on the cloud marketplaces? So we are actively working on improving um, Azure. So we want to increase the number of nodes you can deploy in Azure, and we're making it easier to deploy on Azure. And the upgrade utility, the GP upgrade, will be coming to Azure in the very near future. GCP Marketplace, is, we've already done the development. It's already done. It's there. And uh, we're just waiting on some legal things to get ironed out, and then it'll be available in the GCP Marketplace. More optional installs are coming, so GP Text and PL Container. If you have any questions or ideas on new features for the cloud, uh, let us know at datacloud.dev at pivotal.io. Thank you.